Okay, let's do this. Schönen guten Tag, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren. Ich heiße Sie herzlich willkommen im Hohsau B8 für meine Präsentation über die Lektionen, die ich gelernt habe in meiner Stelle als OpenStack Administrator bei IBM in unserer Spectrum Scale Abteilung. <laughs> Or if you prefer, welcome on our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, to room B8 where in my presentation on lessons learned from running a multi-architecture OpenStack environment at IBM in our Spectrum Scale division. So I'm easily distracted. I don't know about you. So for both of our sakes, let's talk format. In this talk, I will be presenting four lessons that I've learned over the past year. They certainly aren't the only ones I've learned, nor are they necessarily the biggest ones but perhaps the four I could use to create the best story with. In fact, you may, you may already know all these lessons. But each lesson should have a distinct story arc. We'll start with a uh, backstory to identify a problem, and then we'll uh, name the associated lesson uh, to be learned, or, or that was learned, and conclude with a, a solution or a resolution to the issue. Hopefully, we can follow this format Spoiler alert, we probably won't exactly. The lessons are, you know, essentially in chronological order, uh, but by definition, a backstory is going to relate some events from the past. Hopefully, it'll turn out to be one, like one big story that you guys can follow along with. There'll be audience participation, we'll raise hands. It'll be great fun, trust me. Let's start at the beginning. Lesson one, backstory. So a little over a year ago, I, uh, landed in a department at IBM Systems, specifically in the storage business unit, where I inherited an OpenStack uh, setup that was just about to go live. They, had, uh, they only had a week to go before they pressed the go button. Um, one of the first things to go wrong was um, you typed, or you pressed the launch VM button, and VMs refused to launch. This turned to, be out, turned to be out a problem with the Linux bridge agent falling over on a compute node and giving this error too many open files. Anyone here using Linux bridge? Yeah, a few, rock on. More than I thought. Um, anyway, the, so yeah, that was the uh, promised audience participation. So, uh, <laughs> uh, That was our first lesson. Linux Bridge needs some more files. So uh, th how do we resolve that? We increase the uh, U-limit open files allowed for uh, a particular user and or um, computer. Um, yeah, so that was a quick uh, lesson <laughs> to uh, get us started. And you see how these go. Um, so the, uh, this problem only showed itself on our x86 machines. And that is my segue into the next lesson. All right, backstory here is um, that I didn't see that problem at all on any of our power servers. Um, anyone here heard of power architecture? A couple? Anyone using it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, <laughs> well, this talk is part of the hardware enablement track of the summit. and. Uh, At IBM, or at least in, you know, where I work, a good bit of the hardware enablement that we do is around uh, you know, architecture and that being of power. Um, power ISA is the instruction set architecture uh, IBM introduced in 2006. You can read yourself. Um, I guess a little side lesson I learned. I, I had no idea. Uh, IBM actually open sourced the, uh, this architecture. It, um, it's part of a foundation, the Open Power Foundation, and uh, they announced a few years ago that it's going to be part of the Linux Foundation. Woohoo! So to implement uh, a power architecture, you need a power processor um, and a machine that, that it goes in. Power 8 processors came out in 2014. Um, that's what I work with. Power 9s came out supposedly in 2017. Uh, they haven't made it to uh, any of my racks yet. Power 10 uh, theoretically exists. It's like a, um, a, a unicorn, or not quite, but uh, uh, I guess my department doesn't have... <laughs> anyway, I haven't seen one yet. Um, and, but but uh, 
one of the reasons we need uh, power is because we need to test AIX, which is uh, AIX stands for Advanced Interactive ex ex Executive, executive? <laughs> however you say that, um, which is another um, uh, operating system that was put out by IBM way back in 1986. Is based on Unix, and it was released alongside GP GPFS, um, which is the global parallel file system, which got renamed to Spectrum Scale, which is why I work and why we still need to support AIX. So that uh, lesson two, uh, which I, I, di I did not know when I got there, was that, hey, the uh, OpenStack runs on all kinds of stuff. It runs on x86 works on this crazy power stuff. AIX isn't a platform, and how exactly we're going to get uh, AIX comes in a minute. Z, uh, IBM's mainframes, I uh, don't have one, and I haven't done it myself, but I, I have it on, under good authority that OpenStack will run there, too. Um, our lesson learned is that there are multiple architectures. To get to uh, AIX, what we're going to need to do is, oh, crap, I forgot, to, I forgot my other joke. Hold on. I was going to say that this was a picture of the first machine that ever ran power, which it isn't at all. I don't know what this is a picture, is, picture of is when you, uh, uh, IBM just like hands you this huge file deck uh, or slide deck and with all these uh, you know, images that are OK to use and um, <laughs> everything's you know, tailored the way you should do your presentation. And I think some of, the, some of them are pretty hilarious, like this one. Um, so I was going to tell you that this is a guy that wrote Power VC. He's not. He, uh, but he looks like uh, a VC, venture capitalist. <laughs> anyway, ha, 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 yeah. So uh, Power VC is a, is a version of OpenStack. Um, I, I don't know if version is the right word. Anyway, uh, IBM took OpenStack and kind of uh, turned it into or added a whole bunch to it, calls it PowerVC. Um, one of the main things it uses is PowerVM uh, as opposed to KVM or any of your other um, hypervisors that you would uh, normally use. And what that's going to do uh, um, is let you get a... Uh, uh, let you get AIX uh, running uh, in a, an OpenStack environment because it won't, as it stands, you know, with vanilla OpenStack. I don't know how you can call anything vanilla in OpenStack, but um, with plain old OpenStack, you can run AI, you know, x86 just fine, and Power Power will run Linux, and Power Linux runs fine in, in OpenStack. Um, uh, the other OSs I forgot to mention it'll run are AIX and I, and so that's why we need to get. Um, it's not the solution, it is a solution if, if you need to uh, <laughs> run AIX. And I turned my phone off. I was going to do an intermission now and take a picture with everybody. We'll come back to that. <laughs> I'll go ahead and skip to lesson three. Um, so lesson three's backstory uh, goes back into power a bit more. And I'm uh, sorry, I realize this isn't the place to you know go into how... IBM, IBM systems are set up, but bear with me. Really, all I want to point out is the fact that um, it's rather similar to OpenStack. Um, so all the you know, system one, system two, system three, those are your compute nodes. The little colors are, um, are supposed to be um, virtual machines, either running Linux or AIX. And then you see HMC1, HMC2, those are um, hardware management consoles, which are essentially controllers. Like, you're not supposed to log into the systems. You're supposed to log into the controller and use it to carve up the systems into VMs. Um, so when in this uh, OpenStack environment that I inherited, so, you know, we wanted OpenStack to do the VMs, not the HMC. So someone had gone through and, you know, set the entire system to one big VM. But what that essentially was doing was um, trying to get OpenStack to launch a VM within a VM. Does that sound like a good idea to you guys? That's how we do CI. I've, well, it didn't work in this case. <laughs> um, well, it didn't, it didn't work for me on these power machines. So uh, what I had to do was go through and rip out the H, 
the HMCs and get, um, and get VMs on there directly, put there by OpenStack. So uh, yeah, I want to hear more about that when we're done. I think this, uh, so yeah, that lesson was supposed to be that nesting is not necessarily a good idea. I did put in the caveat that necessarily was in there because we do nesting. Um, so GPFS or Spectrum Scale, you know, is a clustered file system software. I don't know that you necessarily want to compare it to Ceph, but you can think of it in the same terms. Um, and so we wanted to eat our own dog food. This open our OpenStack environment uses GPFS as its storage layer. So then we test GPFS on top of GPFS, um, which does work. Um, we have seen some some instances of a bit of corruption, but I haven't narrowed down that down to where it might be, or if that's exactly where it's coming from, because um, I don't have a, I'm working on getting a second OpenStack set up that doesn't have it, so I could have something to compare it to. So this is my, only like my second time doing a presentation at an Open Infra, and I love doing this. Everybody say, Open Infra! Open Infra! Woohoo! Thank you. So do, do we have a resolution for that one? Um, yeah, that sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, last one for the day, lesson four, backstory. This one is a real tearjerker. So all the machines in our OpenStack installation had dedicated card switches for all the provider networks, but all the um, all the connections for, to the underlying uh, OS, you know, um, to get to the machine itself were attached to a wider network, and they were supposedly on a uh, private subnet VLAN. I've already given it away, supposedly. The, that private VLAN was not so private. People showed up, started setting up things, you know, registering um, their IPs with DNS, and uh, the machines I had were uh, only you know, they only had their IPs listed uh, in the Etsy hosts file on a few machines. And yeah, I, so I don't think you can get me on this one. Anyone had any luck getting two machines to consistently answer to the same IP? Yeah, me neither. So our lesson this time is about network isolation. Um, our, our solution in this case is basically a bunch of grumpy people that get to um, re-IP their machines and uh, get uh, some kind of order going on. Um, luckily, my colleagues Christoph Kyle and Jürgen Beisch were smart enough to avoid this predicament in our um, OpenStack environment itself. Um, so, you know, depending on um, on the right, those are all. You can't tell from looking at them, but they're GPFS nodes. Um, and depending on its role, a GPFS node is going to be looking for anywhere from up to, to three networks. So they did some setup scripts, you know, create three private networks for each user and project. They are one-to-one, -one, as we have them set up. The jump host down at the bottom is set up, so it's got an outside line to the world, but um, on it is a cluster tool from there. What we do is um, launch uh, cluster nodes on the back end. That way, um, you know, not only are is network traffic not interfering with any other users' uh, stuff, uh, but it keeps uh, our paperwork way down because you know IT corporate security wants to know about every uh, machine that gets going, and and yeah, <laughs> it has a public address, so that's what they. Uh, want to know. Um, not quite done, uh, but so going forward, what I'll be doing is trying to get, uh, we still have a lot of testing, that we still do physical testing for all of our network um, card um, testing, uh, you know, uh, fiber channel, um, XC, VME, anything that we want to um, test out is all done Physically, I figured that I'd like to get that into our OpenStack. I'm not, um, I assume that that is going to need uh, some more network, I, network isolation to get um, <laughs> back to uh, keep everything safe and sane um, with separate storage for those two, so that you're not trying to compare different kind of cards, access to the exact same kind. 
of traffic because they wouldn't match. So now that's Yeah, now we're at Donka Zero. <laughs> I uh, missed some of my, uh, my cues and blew through that a lot faster than I thought I would. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. If not, oh, we're gone. Um, uh, so Nova Link, I think, is what um, PowerVC uses, and um, I can uh, I can imagine that that, might, that they might steer their own course on that one. Um, uh, GPFS, of course, is storage. It ha I forgot to mention, <laughs> blew through that note. Of course, it uses um, there's a spectrum scale GPFS driver that uh, OpenStack can uh, consume to use GPFS. But as for the um, you know. I'm sorry, I don't know about the grand, IBM's grand plan uh, for Nova. I am um, afraid that it is above my pay grade. Thanks, everyone.